I'll get shit done, I have fun, it's my time and I'm the one, I'm breaking Hello and welcome to another episode of The Business Renovator. I'm your host, Coach Phil. Today we're going to talk about increasing your efficacy and your causative power, which is one of the same. And do it in a way that's relatively easy. It's not hard work. Before we jump into that conversation today, if you're watching us live at the moment, thank you for being here. If you have a question around anything we bring up today, please shoot it into the comments and we'll do our best to address it. And if we can't address it right away, we'll get the answer for you uh, and get it off to you. If you're watching this on the replay, same thing. You can send your questions in. Just will be a delayed response, obviously. And let us know where you're coming in from. That would be greatly appreciated. It's a special day. It's a special weekend uh, for many of us in North America. Today is uh, Canada Day. And we celebrate uh, the birth of Canada. It's 155 years old as a country. And I'm going to be uh, having a staycation of sorts with some neighbors down the road, have a beautiful view of our beautiful city, and maybe even watch the fireworks from their backyard. Should be good. They're awesome people. Uh, that's one way to increase your causative power. And um, I have a plug, a shameless plug for uh, me because uh, I'm a coach and we should tell our story. So have a listen. There's a free gift for you at the end, by the way. Here we go. That song cranks me up. I was dancing in my seat, um, off camera, of course, but I like that song. I just recently added it to the uh, to the promo piece. Yes, it's a shameless plug. Free gift, though. If, if you're interested in finding out what your business growth score is, uh, where are you doing well? Was there room for improvement? If there is, uh, the, the, the uh, business growth score will help you do that. And how you get there is go to the website, uh, coachville.ca and click on the bottom at the button at the top right hand side and uh, you'll have access to it and no credit card is required it's absolutely free if you wanted to have a conversation around the uh, assessment after you've done it absolutely happy to do that if not that's okay anyway let's talk about why we're here today we're here today to talk about uh, causative power get your uh, mental fitness muscle going which is this and increasing your efficacy and I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you, I don't know if this will show up very well because it's, it's in blue, but this, this is what I did today to prepare for my uh, recapture of some of the things I've done that have helped me. And I created this mind map. Well, actually it does show up. So in the mind map, which is hiding me, and I know my, my uh, video coach would be smacking me on the side of the attitude to uh, not do this and be off camera. But, you know, I don't have an image of this that I can pop up. So what this is, is a mind map, and it means not much to you, but it means something to me. And at the end of this session, I hope that it'll mean something to you. So causative po power is the central theme of today. And one of the things that uh, came to mind for me is what I do on a regular basis. Is it whether I'm doing a sales presentation or if I'm doing a, um, a needs analysis assessment for a prospect or a customer, client um, uh, or if I'm just making a phone call of significance or actually every time I have a guest on the business renovator I use this strategy and it's been really powerful now you've got to be able to take some feedback and don't take it personally because if that's 
a concern of yours, then we have to work on the mental fitness muscle more so than what I'm going to introduce to you. So you may or may not have heard of this. We refer to it as QUINK. And QUINK is an acronym. And uh, the more you hang out with me, you'll realize I like acronyms. It helps me remember things. So QUINK is knowing what I now know. K-W-I-N-K. -K, knowing what I now know. And now on its own, it's, it's useless, but there's three underpinning questions. And the questions are uh, stop, start, and continue. So what should I stop doing? Uh, what should I continue doing? And uh, what should I start doing? And when I've done that for myself personally, it's helped me identify where um, I'm getting my own way, where I'm having uh, missed opportunities because I'm not working on the right uh, component of the project right away. Um, also, what am I doing right? Because when I look at what I'm doing right, it's like a pat on the back for me to know I'm on the right path and doing the right things and giving enough value to myself or my, my clients. And the same is true for them. Whenever I, I work with a client, one of the things we'll talk about is uh, quinking it. And what did they learn? What could they stop doing, start doing and continue doing? That's a very powerful tool. That's one tip for today. The other thing is it, in doing Quink, it's actually doing something similar to what a pilot does. And he sets, he or she sets the autopilot and they've set to, to go to a particular course uh, uh, to a destination. So a starting point and an end point, just like what we do with our GPS except for not very many of us have self-driving cars yet, but they're, uh, they're going to be here for most of us soon, probably sooner than what we um, had ever thought to have um, have had happen. I'm thinking of the Jetsons at the same time as I'm thinking about what I'm trying to say here. And in that cartoon, uh, they had some of those vehicles already, although they didn't run on roads, they flew in the air. But that's another story for another day. But the course correction is um, when you get the feedback for the things that you're doing, and where you're moving to, um, I don't know what percentage it is for humans, but apparently for airplanes, there's uh, off course about 90% of the time from where they start and where their destination is. And the autopilot does course correction for them uh, when it's uh, activated to make sure that they do get back on course. And, you know, the wind pushes them away. Uh, and they need to deviate for, because of turbulence, but they still have the end result in mind. So the same is with us. What's your end result? So I guess if we look at end results, that means in order to know where you're going, you and um, you'd need to have goals, I would think, an end point to shoot for, to strive for, to to grow to, to learn more about whatever it is you're going after. Whether it's making more money, if it's um, learning how to teach a course, if it's adding something else like that in your life, those are all goals. Uh, that you could go after. And as you're going to them, uh, if you think back of some of the things you've already set as goals and you've achieved them, was it a straight line from where you started and where you ended up? Or was it a squiggly line kind of all over the place? I'm going to hazard a guess that it wasn't a straight line to where you wanted to get to. It was a squiggly line and you were surprised at some of the places it took you. But when you look back, as Stephen Jobs talks about, um, you can't join the dots moving forward. You can only move, connect them looking back. So I challenge you to do that, which then takes me into another key to creating your causative power, your mental fitness muscle. And that is creating a wins list. Yeah, or a hundred success list. And the idea behind that is to look at all the things we've done in the past that have made us who we are today. <clears throat> And wh why is that important? It's important because, uh, Dr. Bandura says, we go through our successes way too quickly and way too lightly. And if we stop to assess where we've come from and what we've done, what we've learned, uh, who we've helped, what we've become, it allows us to slow down enough to give ourselves a, pat on the back, essentially, to recognize that uh, we are pretty powerful individuals and stop taking ourselves for granted. Um, again, he, Dr. Bender says we go through those sorts of things 
way too quickly and way too lightly. So I would encourage you to slow down just a little and look back at the things that you've overcome. If you've um, had adversity in your, in your life and you're still here, what did you do to get through it? What were the lessons? What were the gifts? Who did you become? What did you learn? What did you experience that helped make you the person you are today? Write those down. Uh, maybe you won a sack race when you were a kid and you haven't talked about it for a decade. So go back and revisit that for a little bit and remember how you felt winning that and having that experience. What other things have you done in your life? What are you doing, working on right now that if you borrowed the feelings and the emotions like from the past, like flick back to those powerful emotions of wins and successes and flick forward, bring them into what you're working on now. Or if you have aspirations to do something that's out of your um, experience in terms of uh, capabilities, we can grow into it. And flicking back and flicking up is an easy way to reduce the anxiety and the stress to allow you to go after that new extraordinary goal that you have in mind that you're just dreaming about. Well, stop dreaming and start acting. And one way to act is to look at what you've done in the past. Leverage that and move forward with um, optimism instead of trepidation. That's been a powerful tool, tick, uh, tip or hack, whatever you want to call it for me. Uh, mental fitness. Well, mental fitness, I mentioned earlier in today's uh, episode. And what we're talking about there is this. How can you develop your, your, um, your mind, your muscle, uh, your brain, so that it actually focuses on the good? Well, the 100 success list is one. Quinking is another. And then mental fitness is actually a uh, like an operating system or um, a methodology to help develop our, uh, yours, mine, mental fitness muscle, our brain, so that we focus on the possibilities more and less on the things that are worrisome. We actually have 10 saboteurs. We have the uh, main character, which is the judge. We all have a judge. You know, the one that tells you, who am I to do this or creates imposter syndrome. Or maybe it's only me who has that uh, imposter syndrome from time to time. Or I can't do that because I'm too old, too young, too short, too tall, too skinny, not uh, not muscular enough. Whatever the uh, voice in our head tells us why we can't do it. It's, it's a crazy thing. It actually is doing us a favor because it, it, it thinks it's keeping us to where we see ourselves, in other words, our self-image. And that's a good thing in some ways and a horrible thing in other ways because it's keeping us to, in our isness, our the way we see ourselves. And that negative voice is doing that because it thinks it's protecting us from ourselves, which is really not the truth. It's just the perception. You see, we act not in accordance to the truth as it is, but more along the lines of how we perceive it to be. By de developing our mental fitness muscle, we're able to move in and away from, move away from the saboteurs, all 10 of them, and move into the sage-like, which is looking for the possibility um, of making things happen, reducing stresses in our life, looking for the gift versus the obstacle and one way i like to see obstacles as is a as an obstacle illusion obstacle illusion because it's in our mind and we it's just an illusion we can get around most of the things in life if we just allow ourselves to do that another strategy uh is the writing things down in a reflective thinking journal so capturing all of your thoughts, the good, the bad, the ugly, your goals, your aspirations, and paying attention to the trend of your thinking. As a result of doing that, you'll find out what's most important to you. There'll be some things that your um, saboteur mind's going to bring up, and by journaling it and paying attention to it, you'll be able to discern whether it's something you want to deal with or it's unimportant and you can just throw it away and not put any more thought there when it shows up and you've something you've identified is not important to you. When the saboteur brings that back up, you could just uh, quiet it down or deal with it. We have a number of different strategies to help you with your saboteurs. And you could use one or two of those strategies to quiet the saboteur down. Uh, they never really go away. 
but we can calm them down and not give them the power that they currently have. And it sounds like I'm talking about the a, a third person. I'm not. It's just the way we think. And if we can control the way we think, we're going to get a different sort of end result. So if you change your thinking, what you think about changes. It's a Dr. Wayne Dyer uh, quote. But it's true. It's very true. So reflective thinking is um, a creative way to capture your thoughts, your ideas, and your angst and aspirations. And th there's a bunch of different ways to do it. There's a number of uh, uh, YouTube videos and audio programs, uh, MP3s and things that you can get from other people. But the essence of it is to capture your thoughts. A couple of things you might want to do is um, put page numbers on your journal somewhere in the top. I use the top left and right hand corners of the page. The only rule is to, to write in it frequently. Uh, you can write upside down. You can misspell words uh, on purpose or accidentally. You can draw if you can if you have that skill. Use multiple colors. I find that's useful because using uh, one color on um, a piece of paper tends to be monochromatic. And what ends up happening is not much. It's harder for our subconscious mind to absorb and create that uh, or etch it into our mind. It, it does etch it in, but if we want to get it in uh, deeper and quicker, use colors, pictures, um, and be creative with it. Right upside down, right sideways up whatever you want to do. Uh, the other thing you want to do is in the back of it, have an index. And in the index, you want to uh, put what page the idea was on so that when you go thinking about or want to track the trends, you can see what pages they are on it and, and reflect right back to them. And it's a quick and easy way to do it. So page numbers, well, first of all, a journal, page numbers, Capture all your thoughts, good, the bad, and the ugly, or as many thoughts as you can. I guess you never really capture them all. At least I haven't. Uh, colored pens, colored markers. It's open. No spell zone. Incorrect spelling is okay. Upside down writing, sideways up writing, doesn't matter. If you can draw, draw. And do it on a regular, consistent basis. And give yourself time to go back uh, after a week, a month, and, and go back and just scan what's important add more notes, extract the, the nuggets and put them in the index, uh, or maybe even put them into another document, could be a digital one, I suppose. And maybe the, 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 a book comes out of that, maybe a plan for a business or a trip or whatever it is that's important to you. We've, so we've done the wins list, we've done the reflective thinking, we talked about mental fitness, controlling the saboteurs and engaging with our sages the possibility thinking. Uh, we talked about airplanes and, you know, 95, 90% of the time they're uh, off course and the autopilot and the pilots are course correcting just to make us get back to where we want to get to. So they need a start point and an end point and they manage the in-between part. And of course, the last but not least is quink, knowing what I now know, what will I stop, start and continue doing? So those are, uh, number of ways that you can use to develop your ability your to get more stuff done your causative power or as dr bandera called it your self-efficacy which is really the same just a different word so whatever word resonates with you use that do it and uh, may you have much success in your life and if this is working for you uh, after you've tried it for a while send me a note let me know it worked or send me a note and tell me it didn't work let's have a dialogue around that Maybe you've got something you would like to share with our audience that is a hack that you have, a way for us to increase our causative power because of something you've done. I have a guest here from Facebook community, and they're saying, uh, happy Canada Day. I much appreciate that, but I'm not sure who it is. I know a couple of people that live there, but I'm not sure which one of them it would be. It could be Ron Goodwin. It could be Joan Orcott. Um, it could be Greg to Simone, uh, but Facebook has not let me know who it is. But I'm grateful that they were here, uh, listening in, watching, and letting me know that you're here. Thank you, Facebook user, for the best wishes. And for you in, in the U.S. on uh, Monday, it's uh, 4th of July, and I hope you have a wonderful celebration of your own, and uh, everybody is safe and healthy there as well. So. 
Until next time, I am Coach Phil. I just want to do one more thing before I jump off the airwaves here, and that is to share this with you, to remind you to be wonderful. The you in wonderful represents you in a couple of ways. You are unique, and you truly are wonderful. So continue being your wonderful self. Maybe one of these ideas here will help you increase your causative power and allow you to move forward. Oh, it's Joe. Ah, it's Joe Norcott. Hello, Joe. Thank you for being here. You don't know what I'm talking about. There he is. He, his procrast his saboteur's procrastination. I apply a sage to it. Awesome. Great to hear that, Joe. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's a work day for you, but you get the rest of the weekend off after today and enjoy your uh, July 4th as well. So uh, remember, be wonderful. The you in that word is representing you. So now, now go act like your wonderful self. Until next time, I'm Coach Phil. And remember, uh, if you would like to have a copy and, and try the business growth assessment out, please shoot me a note or go to our website even, coachphil.ca. Click on the button in the top right-hand corner and... Um, you'll have the opportunity to complete that. Until next time, have a wonderful weekend. I get shit done. I have fun. It's my time.